Does anyone remember last quarter sales numbers? I don't, but we can ask our bot. At sales, quarter four, 2017, European revenue. Processing. Q4 2017 revenue was 8.33 million euro versus 6.39 million euro Q4 2016. Thanks. What we just saw was bot power in action, the ability to query for information from one or more sources and have it summarized succinctly for all in a chat room. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the G Suite Dev Show. I'm your host, Wesley Chun. I'm excited to introduce you to the Hangouts Chat Developer Platform and API. Of course we can converse with colleagues in chat rooms, but making data requests or automating work at the same time is much more powerful. In today's intro video, I'll show you not one, but two ways of building chatbots. Let's start with the hello world for Hangouts Chat, the Echobot. Here you can see it's a full one-line JavaScript glory. As you can see, the function name is called onMessage, and it takes an event object as a result of the message that was posted in the chat room, and all our bot does is greet the user and echoes back what they wrote. Can't get any easier than this. Check the docs for a slightly longer quick start for more info. However, your bot will likely be more complex, so we need to investigate writing bots a little further before diving into more code. The next step is to discuss some basics on how to build a bot and how they work. We do this by recognizing what happens to bots, or in other words, what events are sent to bots. Once a bot is added to a chat room, users can interact with it. When users message a bot, Hangouts Chat sends the message to your bot along with a message type and other data. There are four message types. Added to space is the first message a bot gets when it's added to a room or a direct message or DM. Your bot would typically send back a message like, thanks for adding me to this room. The second message type is removed from space. This is the message that's received by the bot after it has been removed from a room or a DM. Since your bot's been removed, there's no response. Message is a normal message that's sent by a user to a bot, and these are the most common, as you can imagine. Your bot has to service the request and send back an appropriate response. The last message type is card clicked. This means a user clicked on an interactive card in Hangouts Chat instead of sending a message. Your bot either sends an appropriate response or updates the UI card, or maybe both. JavaScript and Python are two popular platforms, so we'll demo bots in each one for you. The JavaScript runs on Google Apps Script, while its Python equivalent runs on Google App Engine. Apps Script does basic event handling for developers and calls the appropriately named function, one of the reasons why using Apps Script is easier than other platforms. You just have to name your functions with the exact names that are supported for each message type. App Engine is a bit lower level, so you need to grab the request body, parse the JSON payload, and determine the message type and contents. In other words, you need to check all the events that come in and see what message type it is. Then take the appropriate action. Now it's time to talk our, about our sample bot today. Asking your colleagues to vote on something is fairly common, whether it be who's going out to lunch or who's in for the basketball game after work. Let's build a simple vote bot by which participants can issue an up or down vote as well as create a new vote. Let's go to the computer so I can show you this example in both JavaScript and Python. The samples we're looking at in this DevBite video are both available on GitHub, so feel free to follow along at github.com slash gsuite devs slash hangouts chat samples. The bot we're implementing is a text-only version of the vote bot. Let's look at it in App Script first. Here's what the vote card looks like. You'll see plus one and minus one buttons for up and down votes, as well as a new button for starting new votes, which is the default action. Okay, now we can look at the vote textbot.js script. Scrolling down to the bottom, you'll see how App Script processes the message types. You know, added to space, removed from space, message, and card clicked. Well, it does so by calling the corresponding similarly named on function we looked at earlier. In the vote bot, we're only processing message and card clicked messages and not taking any action when the bot is added to or removed from a space. On message ignores whatever message the user has sent, creates a new vote card, and returns it. On card clicked is where the real magic happens. If new vote is selected, it does the exact same thing as when a user sends any message to the bot. It creates a new vote. When up or down vote are clicked, those actions are passed as a string parameter in the event object along with the current vote count, which was converted to a string. When the vote count variable is created, that value must first be converted back to an integer so that it can be incremented on an up vote or decremented on a down vote. 
Now when the card payload is created using create message, the command to update the current card only if a new vote was not selected, meaning an up or down vote. Scrolling up to create message, you'll see that it converts that vote count to a string as mentioned before, then uses the should update flag to indicate a new vote card, if true, or update the existing card otherwise, meaning an up vote or down vote. Then it pieces the card together section by section as JSON markup. This gets returned to Hangouts Chat, which then renders the card to users in the chat room. There are no surprises when you run this example. Clicking on plus one ups the count while minus one brings it down, and new starts a new vote. Now, if we hop up and over to the Python App Engine version, the core functionality is also in a single file, bot.py, plus the App Engine app.yaml config file. Scrolling down to the bottom again, you'll see that it's slightly more lower level than the App Script version because you have to introspect the payload that comes from the HTTP POST request. There's an if, else if, else, that takes the same actions as the app script version depending on the message type. Similarly, there's an analog to create message that puts together the corresponding JSON payload returned to Hangouts Chat. We won't run this version, but trust me, it's the same thing. Overall, I find this bot useful because it's a bit more useful than what you get from the quick starts and you get to learn about interactive cards. Not bad, right? We picked AppScript and Python App Engine for a reason. They require a few lines of code and are portable. For example, the AppScript sample can be ported to Cloud Functions or Node.js in a straightforward way. Similarly, the Python example can be ported to Flask. Then you can run that app on either App Engine or your own stack. You may have noticed that bots work a bit differently from standard APIs. You know, where your app gets some input, say from a website or other form of input. And then your app with the proper credentials will make a call to the API, which processes a request, and then sends back a response to which you respond to your user. You know, typical client-server stuff. But bots are a little bit different in that the original request comes from a user in a chat room, which means Hangouts Chat is what gets the message, and its servers contacts your apps. You service a request and respond back to Hangouts Chat, which then renders your response back into the chat room. All right, the roles are almost reversed, meaning your bot is kind of like the API, servicing requests made in chat rooms. Does that make sense? All right, so that means that bots generally live on some server somewhere. Now let's talk where. A wide variety of platforms to host bots are supported. I'll argue that Google Apps Script is the easiest to get started with. You code in JavaScript, but more importantly, Apps Script gives you and your data and your bot access to data and functionality from Gmail, Google Drive, Calendar, Docs, Sheets, Slides, and more. Best of all, Apps Script is serverless, meaning that Google hosts your app so you don't need to spin up your own VM or other stack components. If you want to code in JavaScript, but more like Node, but also stay serverless, you have two options. One tighter integration with a Google Cloud Platform, or GCP for short, well, instead of G Suite, well, then choose Google Cloud Functions. Building a mobile app or a mobile web app with Firebase, well, then choose Cloud Functions for Firebase. Want to read more about these choices? Well, check this page in the docs and realize they're both the same product but tuned for either the Cloud or Firebase. Still want to live in the land of serverless but want more choices in languages? Then consider Google App Engine, platform as a service, or app hosting in the Cloud. We showed you Python earlier, but App Engine also supports Java, PHP, Go, and more. Need more control? Well, then you're going to have to spin up a VM to host your bot. You can use Google Compute Engine or any public or private cloud provider. Now that you may have noticed, we didn't do any authorization, nor did we use a Hangouts Chat API. That's because we created a synchronous bot, meaning it was able to pull in those sales numbers and respond back to the user immediately. Some queries may take longer or have to talk to more systems. In those cases, you can build a bot that responds asynchronously when results are ready. In these cases, you would use the API or other technique for responding back to the chat room. We'll take a look at those in another video. For now, we want you to have enough to get started. Check out the first link to learn more about bot concepts. The next link is for those who want to learn more about actually building bots. Finally, if you're not ready to build bots yet, but want to see more examples, we've got a page in the docs for you too. Got your vote bot working and want to break out to the box? Well, here's a challenge for you. Make any or all of these five additional upgrades. One, add images. Two, keep track of who has voted and who hasn't. Three, don't let the vote count go below zero. Four, only allow down votes from users who have at least one upvote. And five, the user who starts a new vote should be able to choose a topic, you know, like lunch, after work game, and so on. 
By the way, the first one has already been done for you, so check it out in the docs page on interactive cards. Hope you're ready to build some bots. No longer are chat rooms just for conversations. With feature-rich, intelligent bots, users can automate tasks, get critical information, or do other heavy lifting with just a simple message. We're excited at the possibilities that await both developers and G Suite users on the new Hangouts Chat Developer platform. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and tune in again next time. This is Wesley Chun from Google, and we'll see you next time upstairs in the G Suite.